The models are showing a new landfall on what will likely be a hurricane in the southeast. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice with new data keeping you up to date. Please let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now. I do multiple updates like this every day and here we go with this system getting closer and closer to the southeast, likely making landfall as we go into Sunday, Monday into Tuesday for the Carolinas as a strong tropical storm or even a hurricane showing up on these models and then moving into areas that are just one year removed from Hurricane Helene impacts. Folks, we got to stay dialed in on this. There's a lot that could change. This system is about to move over the warmest waters that we have in the Atlantic, and that will change things in a big way. Folks, if you're new to this channel, I'm a no nonsense meteorologist. I provide uh, updates around the clock, so please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. In these updates, I'm very transparent with you. I always tell you when it's time to be concerned, and more importantly, when it's not. Right now, it's not quite time to go to the hardware store uh, for the Carolina for Florida, for Georgia, but it is certainly time to be checking back in. You do not want to uh, kind of check out on this because this system will likely change and we're going to have new landfall locations as we hone that in. Folks, we don't even have a named system yet, but it's so close to land that by the time it actually gets a name and then gets close to land, it will likely be causing some problems already. So I would not be surprised if eventually we get what's called a PTC, a potential tropical cyclone, and that could come as early as the next advisory, and we'll let you know as soon as it does. So please stay tuned on that. Umberto has also formed, and is something to watch in the near term as well, because its steering currents and impact around it will certainly play a role in everything. So folks, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now. At the end of every video, I do a comment and a question and answer session. I'd love to know where you're watching from right now. The new model data that came in from this, uh, the new 00Z, shows this storm system getting in between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. That has been the theme today. The models are in pretty good agreement here with that. And then continuing west toward the Western Carolinas, areas that do not want to see another landfalling tropical system for a very long time. We've already had a once in a lifetime system here. We don't want to have a, another you know, tropical entity of any kind. The good news is the models aren't jumping up at Cat 2, Cat 3. They're tropical storm, maybe Cat 1 that we can handle okay as we move forward here we just need to watch what those impacts could be because again this is moving over very warm waters here's today's gfs model still offering hope that it would try to curve back out but what's happening here is this thing is getting caught in a high pressure that's developing and moving in that's trying to steer this back toward the west there's last night's european ensemble. Let's show you today's as we move closer. This shows a landfalling system getting close to the United States and then hanging out and then moving inland and then moving up. That again we could handle here going throughout a good bit of next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then kicking out. So is that a trend that the European AI is trying to show that the rest of the models haven't caught on to yet? Or do we have more suspicions that this thing just takes a beeline for the West? Well, the regular old European model has a different idea. The 18Z goes up through Myrtle Beach like the other models do is a 990 low. That's a strong tropical storm, maybe even a Cat 1. Goes through Myrtle Beach, curves up through Wilmington, Charlotte, Fayetteville, then kicks back out. That's what the new model is showing. So it's a hint like the AI model. It's not too far off from it, but it's something to definitely keep an eye on. The European uh, 12Z run, let's look at that. We go back one model run, here you go. It shows a tropical storm or a hurricane getting up through Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, then curving inland toward Fayetteville getting out through the Western North Carolina mountains right there. And again, that's a lot of rain in a short period of time. High impact system if it were to play out like that. How about today's GFS? Well, the midday run came out very similar to that European. Looks like Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach. A lot of these models are showing Myrtle Beach. Meanwhile, Umberto's over here. Don't mind it, just a 965, very compact hurricane, strong hurricane at that. This shows that system moving inland, inland, inland toward the Western Carolinas, and again, not something the Western Carolinas want to see whatsoever. Let's go over the impacts with that. Here's the new GFS model. It would paint through the week, a swath of about six inches along the coast and where it goes inland at about five inches. So you're left with five plus inches of rain here across the Western Carolinas. And a lot of that falls Monday night into Tuesday. All right, European. 18Z keeps the worst of the rain toward Horry County, Georgetown, 
up north through Fayetteville, Wilmington, Raleigh, Durham, the triad. That's double digit rainfall totals. We're talking 10 to 15 inches. That is not good. We don't want to see that anywhere, much less here in the Western Carolinas. So we need to keep a close watch on this. This would have a sharp gradient the farther west you go. Charlotte, five inches. Spartanburg, two inches. Greenville, one inch. Asheville, one inch. Again, those are manageable numbers on the European. Let's look at the trend. Here's the last run of the 12Z. So it trended a little bit east on this last run. Does that trend continue? That would certainly be a welcome sight. Let's look closer at the models here. This is the Super Ensemble. Looks like it's curling up right here through Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, going up through the Outer Banks, and then back out. How about the European consensus? Well, the European goes up through Myrtle Beach, kind of hooks in right there. Well, a lot of them still are spread here. Folks, you got to remember, right now its origin is barely even got its sea legs back into the Atlantic. It's been over land for a while. It's been over some high land in the mountains of Hispaniola right here, so, some up 10,000 feet. Now, the GFS is not great. The GFS is not great at all. Shows a strong storm system, GFS up through the Carolinas, through the Western Carolinas, then dipping back down, back into the Gulf. Not ideal there either. Google's DeepMind, while the operational run has been like this, a lot of the ensemble members are trying to showcase hits in South Carolina here, but a lot of the European model run is still kind of hanging out right in this general consensus. So we'll have to watch that. Who ends up being correct? Do we end up getting a more Western term? And what does that look like for winds? Well, let's go back to the same model I showed you and flip this thing over to wind gusts uh, because that's a good way of looking at where the track would go and also what the highest impacts would be. This is solidly on the 18Z, a tropical storm, 50 to 60 miles per hour up through Wilmington, through Charlotte, and then up through the mountains. The Western Carolinas are in on 30, 35 mile per hour winds. As we look toward the 12Z, that one was a lot more dire. This was a hurricane making landfall between Georgetown and Myrtle Beach. It had winds inland of 60, 70 miles per hour. That would be big impacts. That would be big power outages. You got 50, 60 mile per hour winds in here toward the upstate, Western North Carolina. That would be power outage city. We've seen that before. We don't want to see it again. How about the European? You saw where that track was at 18Z with double digit rainfall totals back toward the triad. How about now? This would have 50 to 60 mile per hour winds in that cone where the track actually goes. And the farther west you go, you got 25, 30 mile per hour winds. All right, so things would look okay in that realm. So that's the good news here is that it's not a off the charts cat two, cat three, not, not looking at anything like that, but what we do seem to look for here is the chance that we could be dealing with, at the very least, a tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane, and it's making landfall somewhere in the southeastern United States. Right now, that landfall looks to be between Charleston and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and with it being a fast-moving system, some of those impacts would very quickly push inland and would need to be a threat uh, to watch in the coming days. So... That's where we have to watch very, very closely here and where we'll be ironing out in the coming days. So folks, where are you watching from right now? Let's get the conversation going with our comments here. So thank you for tuning in. Guys, we do this update just about every day. So some of you are local, some of you are new. So welcome to the channel. This is a great opportunity for you to subscribe and be a part of this family because I tell you what, we nerd down on weather just about every day. And in this case, we talk about the impacts and this is why I do what I do, folks. I'm a farmer's son. I am who you see on TV is the way I am on the web as well. I am very transparent in my forecasting, which is a little bit of a different breed, right? Some will wait till they know exactly. They'll, they'll wait till the last minute till they know for sure. In my case, I like to tell you and be transparent along the way. Evita says, I'm watching from the low country of South Carolina. We always remember Hugo, 100%. We're going to be watching that closely. I don't think this is a Hugo. We're watching it, though, to see if it blows up in intensity. Oh, we got Silver watching from South Carolina. Thank you, thank you. Mississippi Gulf Coast enjoying and watching and praying for anyone who may be impacted by these storms. We've got Charleston, South Carolina House says, thank you, Chris. Yikes, fingers crossed. We'll keep you posted there. Asheville, North Carolina here still recovering from Helene and hoping it stays away from all of us as we are healing. 100%. Hope says, thank you for the updates. Prayers for everyone. 
We got Spring Hill, Florida in the house. You're hands down the best meteorologist I've watched since I've lived in Oklahoma City. Thank you so much. Jeffrey, thank you for your kind words. That means the world to me. You've been in some uh, fine company in Oklahoma City. Uh, I know Damon over there. Uh, I don't know who you watched, but uh, that means the world to me. Thank you. Certainly got a lot of weather over that way. Somerville, South Carolina, I'm starting to make plans just in case. Hey, that's a great idea. I'll keep you posted up for sure. Uh, hey, thanks for keeping us dialed in, Chris. Watching from St. Augustine, Florida. We got York, South Carolina here. Just moved here. Gathering candles, water, food, just in case. Charging banks and getting a fresh tank of gas just to be on the safe side. Hope everyone is safe. Godspeed. Yeah, you know, folks, we're not talking a week, 10 days out. We're talking four or five days out here. So that's certainly some good ideas. Uh, you know, the idea that we could lose power is possible there in South Carolina. There could be widespread power outages uh, if this were to occur. So we're going to have to keep watch on that. Swansboro, North Carolina, watching, and I appreciate your updates so much. Laura says, thanks for the update. Watching from the Wilson, North Carolina area and appreciating your forecast. Kara says, watching from Greenville, South Carolina. We got Violet watching right now from North Carolina. Definitely some impacts across the state of North Carolina, South Carolina with this one. Clemens, North Carolina in the house. Hi, Seth. Watching from Northeastern, North Carolina. Hi, Ann. Thanks, Chris. Helpful update. Watching from Conway. Got a Michigan fan in the house. Really enjoy your fan, your videos, Chris. Big fan. Charleston, South Carolina here. Watching from Savannah, Georgia, Tybee Island. Hey, I lived on Tybee Island. Lived on Silver Street next to the Arby's there for a while. That was my first gig out of TV and actually where I met my wife. She grew up in Richmond Hill. Still got some family down that way, so hello to you. Hey, Leroy, watching from the Bahamas. Hey, thank you for watching in the Bahamas. We got Tarboro, North Carolina in the house, about 150 miles from the coast. Thanks, Chris, for keeping us informed. Yeah, you're certainly there in the crosshairs now, Xavier. It's been five years since we've had a hurricane landfall in North Carolina, ESA ES in 2020. Is this a real concern? Keep it dialed in. You know I will, Xavier. Thank you. Dialed in from Brunswick. Thank you, Chris. Oh, you bet. Tell Will hello. All right. Uh, hi, Chris. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the updates. Watching from St. Augustine, Florida. Do you think it will come northeast Florida? I think you're going to be just to the west of it. Looks like a South Carolina thing. Haven't seen much for Savannah southbound, but uh, you certainly gonna need to stay dialed in because this is a, a developing system that's got some umph to it. Aiken, South Carolina. Here we go. You got me worried. Hey, no need to be worried. We're just going to keep you posted, measured, steady updates. You know, each model run that comes out gives us consistency, hopefully, in the models, and consistency breeds confidence, and that'll eventually get us to where we need to be. Um, Greenville, glad to have the up-to-date information. Beaufort, South Carolina. Trevor, hello from the Bahamas. So far, it has been raining. It's all about tropical weather until our time comes. Hopefully, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think you're going to be okay, Trevor. Uh, certainly some impacts from this moving through the Bahamas here in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, and then the United States shortly after that. Hey, praying for all who weather the storm. Amen. <coughs> Thank you for that, Richard. Hey, Hurricane Helene, one year ago today, Valdosta, Georgia. Keep doing great work. Hey, thank you. Greenville, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. We got North Carolina in the house. Brian from Columbia. The Villages, Florida. Chris, thank you for providing a full picture of the weather. Hey, you bet. I got Vero Beach, Florida, watching closely. Hey, thank you, sir. Hey, Sebring, Florida is in the house. Always watching and always trust you. Hey, thank you. My regulars here. Tess from Clearwater Beach, Florida. Where's Rose from Sarasota? I know you're watching. Hello, Rose. Good morning to you. Virginia Beach in the house. Watching and waiting in Daytona Beach, Florida. Leicester, North Carolina. Fantastic reporting. Hey, thank you. The Island of Spanish Wells in the Bahamas. Hey, thank you for watching, Stacy. Please tell all your friends and family. We're watching the Bahamas very closely here. Virginia here, keeping a watch on things. Fountain Inn, South Carolina. Northeast Florida. Madison County, Georgia. We've got Georgetown, South Carolina. Clarksville, Georgia's favorite weatherman. Hey, Edward, thank you for that. Beaufort, North Carolina. Give me some good news. Uh, you know, we're, we're hopeful. We're hopeful this thing's going to stay in the tropical storm realm. That would be some good news. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mr. Justice, thank you so much for showing the wind and rain potential in the models. It really helps. Can you explain what exactly a tropical wave is and the process it undergoes to become a tropical depression? Thanks. I really appreciate your hard work. I've studied weather since Hugo in 1989. I was determined to never be caught off guard again. I was nine years old at the time. 
I love weather. Hey, as somebody that has a 10-year-old, I can appreciate that. When you get a storm that sticks with you forever like that, I'm telling you, it really resonates with you. And when you're looking at a tropical wave, it's basically like a snowball effect. Think of the snowball as it is very infancy. You're building a snowman, right? It's a tropical wave. It's basically a little bit of rotation, weak, low pressure. As that system gets a little bit bigger and more organized, the snow's getting bigger. So now you got the bottom part of the snowman built. If you just have that, you don't have a tropical storm or a hurricane. You need the core of the system to be intact, a warm core low that starts to get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. That's when it transitions from a tropical wave that's pretty beefy, giving rain and some gusty winds, to an actual tropical depression, which is an organized warm core low that's off to the races from there. Hope that helps in a snow realm. You can tell I'm ready for I'm ready for fall and winter, right? Ah, oh, man. Naples, Florida in the house. Good morning watching from the Bahamas. We got greetings from New Jersey. Love your videos. Been watching since the start of hurricane season. My question is, my girlfriend lives in Charleston, South Carolina. Should we start to be thinking about getting supplies and or evacuating? Hey, no evacuations needed. You know, as of now, that could change. I don't think it will. But uh, South Carolina is prone to hurricanes. It's something we have done and been through. So uh, telling her uh, to, of course, listen to authorities would be uh, key there. But uh, stocking up on stuff that would be good for a few days, no power would be a good idea. Some non-perishables, some crackers, some drinking water, having a full tank of gas, having some cash on hand would be a good idea. But um, as far as evacuations, not seeing that right now, but we'll keep you posted there. Thank you for the question there. Eastern North Carolina, Union Mills, North Carolina. We got North Florida, and we got Venice, Florida in the house. Folks, it means the world to me for you to be here with me tonight uh, and today, wherever you're watching from. I promise to keep you posted. That is my, my goal here, always to prepare you, not to scare you, giving you that up-to-date information. Subscribe to this channel if you don't already. Follow uh, with the notifications button to be alerted anytime I post a video. Folks, I will keep you posted. Stay tuned and stay safe.